A reminder, <clears throat> the meeting is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel in the near future. No cause for public hearing. There's no old business on our uh, docket. As for new items of discussion, Linda Kreitzer is here to talk about Lexus Nexus agreement, correct? Right? Not Lexus Nexus. Oh, I'm talking about the West. Sorry. West contract is what we're proposing. I sent you a whole packet on it with You're a spreadsheet right. on the cost. We're looking to um, our contract with, with Lexus is up on August 31st, 2018. And in my letter, I enumerated the reasons we want to go with West. Um, <clears throat> For the next five years. So, so uh, can you just summarize your reasons for switching to West or wanting to switch to West? It has a better platform. It's easier to use. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the contracts includes 15 <coughs> attorney users and 15 non-attorney users, where Lexus offers only 11. But the difference in that isn't really substantial because they just differentiate. We never did our MDJs as attorneys. West does it that way. Um, the patron access, which is our public access for the law library, <coughs> is a lot less for um, through West, <laughs> although the other contract is a little bit higher. Um, we share that with Forest County. We share both contracts with Forest County. And with... Do they reimburse us? They do. 20%. Oh. The, well, the patron access, right now, the only way we can use it is by having a terminal here, <coughs> in our, just in, outside our office. We previously had it in the law library, but we've moved it out. Um, and anybody from Forest County had to come here to use it. Well, with the West contract, we can have two terminals. We can't have concurrent use of it, but they can have, they can at least do the legal research in Forest County, which is substantially better for us and for the, the individuals that are using it. Um, West is offering us a free trial period, which we had West before we before we had this Lexus contract. Um, the reason we went with Lexus is because of the cost. West would not even negotiate with us on a lower cost. But you were able to do that this time. This time we were, because they want us back, probably. Okay. How long ago did you start with Lexus Nexus? Five years ago. Okay, so, did, like, so literally the contract we're under currently is the one that we negotiate with Yes. Time. Yes. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. They're going to give us the free trial through May until the end of our contract. Um, I was able to negotiate a little bit lower cost that they originally offered. And the patron access is yes. Does any of this have to go through RIT like with Bill Gallagher? So, yeah. Okay. Uh -uh. No, and I did a spreadsheet. It is a little bit more, but it's not substantial. Um, our users prefer West. Well, I get, I, my question is, is like I noticed the numbers you put together. It, are you just doing like just a general okay for five patrons this is what it would cost for five patrons or is this our, our, like a little overall cost for the overall cost for each year Ooh, okay like for total yes okay so the 111 115 those are both that's for a five-year contract for both okay so it'd be roughly three thousand more over the five-year period correct Yeah, which is so this contract would begin September first. Yes. Oh, okay. Any further questions? No. Okay. Thank you.
This is ready to pass in the next meeting. The solicitor has a chance to look over. I don't believe so, unless you gave it to them. But. We'll, we'll have to look at it. I doubt they'll bring it. And if we go with this contract, some uh, the prior contract is always with the commissioners. Commissioners have to sign that. We'd have to notify Lexis that we're going to terminate right. as of. Is there a window of time that you need to sever the contract? Know. We'd have to. I'd have to dig out the whole contract. We want to make sure we do that in time. I'll I'll look at that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, anything else for Linda? Any public questions, comments? All right. Actually, I do have a question. I get uh, legal books for the VA through LexisNexis every other year. <coughs> now, is that going to have an effect on that? No. This doesn't have anything to do with written publications. This is only for online legal research. Anything else? Although, the only other thing is that it, we did it one time five years ago. I put together a package deal where um, we looked, you can do this through Lexis and I believe through, I know we can do it through West. You get a discount and we pulled together under one account all our subscription, written subscriptions. And if you wanted to negotiate with them for maybe a lower price for our written subscriptions instead of each department having their own yeah definitely um you might want to contact them about that who, yeah. hand, who, who administers that currently the subscriptions we do it for the law library every, every office has their own has their own and they're, they're in contact individually with the agency and we did put it together at one time we didn't go with a contract uh, west gives us like a 50 percent discount or a partial discount on subscriptions i don't know what lexus would do because we don't get very many from lexus um, but you might want to look at that yeah pull, pull that together and because they will do they probably will do a contract on that, mm -hmm. the written subscriptions yeah we could have the fiscal office dig through the bills from Lexus, Nexus, and West, and then figure out which departments have what. That's a substantial cost. Yeah, because they. Tim, could you relay that to Eric? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Isn't it better to have everything under one contract? It, yeah, I mean. Money wise, you would say, wouldn't you? Hopefully. Absolutely. Well, we'll look into it. Anything else related to like the census uh, Westlaw? Okay. Have, um, have either of you had a chance to think about the feasibility study? I don't. Yeah, we we're going to discuss that today, and um, I'm I'm still really not prepared to discuss the only, it. The only thing I'm ready to kind of discuss, I think, would be all, what I would ask for is approval for the fiscal office to go ahead and create a application for the parking lot <clears throat> and send it into PCOM because they have this program that I think we should try to utilize. Absolutely. So my thought is we'll pull some match money from the Ralph's Road Fund, use either PCorp or PCOM to dedicated 15, or actually increase to 20 grand this year, and then see what more we can get. Um, well, talking to Eric, he said that there are two $20,000 pots. That <clears> right, there's P-Comp and P-Corp. And they haven't been touched. And um, my thing well, is, is that although touched. we did the feasibility study, they're still working on the parking study. That okay. should be finalized in the next week. Right. So what I would say is, is if, like that's something that needs to be done. And I think yes, immediately. It needs to be done. Or, or I don't want to say immediately, but like if we're going to do something this year, right? And I would advocate putting it out to bid immediately, like as soon as we can, because we've had a lot of trouble mm -hmm. in the last couple of years getting paving folks. <clears throat> period. So no. this, this is a bigger project too. No. Okay. So we have general agreement to at least go out to bid on that for pending. Well, I think that w I think the idea is is we would get what um, the engineer 
kind of brings back to us and then and then put it out to bid based on whatever specs we're comfortable with from them. And go ahead and apply, have the fiscal office apply for the grants. Yeah, what I would say is, is in the meantime, get the fiscal office lined up with funding for the project, just generally <coughs> speaking, so that we have a cap of like what we're willing to work with. Right. And we did dedicate some of our capital budget towards this as well. I don't recall how much. Yeah, we'd have to look at that too. But that, that was something that was on our list. Because essentially, <coughs> just uh, for everybody's information, we, as a part of the overall feasibility study, we had the um, architectural slash engineering firm look at parking within the, the county. There was a rough proposal that was um, sent to or what wasn't sent to us we, when we did the review of the feasibility study they they had a few sheets that they were still working on related to the parking study um there are two major reasons to do the parking uh study and to work on a reformed parking setup one is due to the change in single point of entry um we're having a lot of issues with people walking in the parking lot even more so than normal, and that's a liability to uh, the organization. So part of this parking study is going to involve uh, creating a path or a sidewalk that runs along the side of the building so that people do not walk uh, like through uh, the parking space. Um, and also to address like uh, ice, ice and of snow accumulation along that stretch as well in order to limit slipping and um, accidents um, of that nature. So that's one piece of it. The second piece is, is the parking lot is in a state of disrepair. Um, it needs to be redone. So we'd rather do it, you know, or we need to take care of it. We can only patch it so much for so long. And the third reason is, is there are some um, ADA issues that we need to address um, all around the courthouse that's a part of the last parking bill that uh, need to be done as well in order to bring the whole setup up to date. So those are the reasons that it's a priority. And as a result of all of the various um, safety issues, this is a project that falls under the auspices of our P Corp and PCOM grants um, through CCAP. And they have pools of money to grant to counties in order to do upgrades that will help with safety and prevent, you know, uh, um, uh, injuries and, and other insurance issues. Okay, good. Any more to say on the feasibility study then? Should we just push it off for another week to talk about it next yeah. week? Yeah. Well, honestly, um, I'm not going to be here next week. Oh yeah, because really? of the human services summit. So the following, and frankly, I'm going to be completely buried with that. So the follow, the, <coughs> I think a week from Monday would be enough time to like revisit the feasibility study. Yeah, so May study. seven. I, I will not be here either because I'm going to the Knox Law event. I will not be here either. All right, so let's just cancel next Monday's work session, and we'll move the topic of discussion to the seven. Because there's a, there's a lot to look at with that and still. And by then, I certainly think I should have the retirement stuff together. Can you just schedule a meeting with me and Lisa? I actually do it. <laughs> um, anything else we should talk about at the next work session that you can think of? I mean, obviously, you can still get it to Pam later, but I just. Yeah. I'm sure there's, there's stuff going on. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, what's next? Uh, public comment. Any public comment? All right. Projects. Any project updates? Um, I'm going to be putting out um, a news release sometime today. I keep meaning to do it. Um, a week ago, we had our first meeting of the redevelopment <coughs> task force. Um, it was. It was very productive, um, certainly far more serious than the marketing task force. A lot of it has to do with uh, the project itself being a lot more nitty gritty, I think. Um, the, the, the group has divided up um, with chairs for each of the five areas of focus. Um, they've scheduled meetings in order to, um, in order to discuss 
um, all of their various issues. What I was going to do is catalog all of the meetings and then send invitations to the commissioners so that if they care to go and see what's going on or, or provide input, that they're welcome to attend. Um, and also the, the public meeting agenda, which has been posted in the newspaper, I'll forward that to you as well so that if you want to attend those meetings and add information to it, um, you'd be welcome to. Um, all of the subcommittees are asking for volunteers to be involved in them or people that are interested in them. If, if there are people that are interested in serving on the task force, they should just come and see me. I'd be more than happy to work with them to get them on an appropriate committee. And I'm um, very excited to see how things go. Everybody seemed like they were ready to hit the ground running and um, they're already kind of taking off and doing their own thing, so that's good. There have been, oh, I, I'd also just, to go along with that, um, with the weekly meetings at the townships, um, we've had an enormous amount of conversation about blight and about, um, and about redevelopment issues and the RDA. Um, it's definitely a major um, concern for many of the townships who are having a difficult time dealing with um, blighted property and also um, permitting and code enforcement have also been issues that they've talked a lot about. So it's a okay. Um, from my part, first voting machines. So there's this the Secretary of State. <laughs> I sent out an email, was it last week, that said something about having a little vendor show down in Harrisburg on Thursday. I'm already planning on going down on Thursday for a, um, a conference in the evening. I figure if I just went yep. early, I could hit that. Have you heard any more about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll look into it. Or could you, would you mind seeing if it's still a go, where it is? Still a go, I know that for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you can just shoot me over details, that'd be great. And if there needs to be registration or anything, could you just go ahead and register me? Okay. I can't remember if we brought this up at the last meeting or not, where we discussed the election machines. <coughs> I just wanted to have a brief conversation about the whole issue with the decertification of machines that's been discussed at the state level. Um, I just wanted to share that we, at, at the Northwest County Commissioners meeting, um, Doug Hill shared this, and this is something that I had never considered before, but it apparently is now becoming an issue that the governor's office I don't think had considered, which is the, like in our county, the commissioners are the board of elections, and so next year will be an election year for the commissioners, and they technically cannot serve on the board of elections, so how they could purchase or lease or negotiate contracts on new machines is not feasible as the board of elections, and it creates this weird conflict. Um, that I think somebody's going to have to resolve at the state level um, in order to do what they're discussing. Um, that said, they also, I, I've seen numbers where they're talking about the state potentially helping with funding for some of these, but the money, well, the money, well, well, it, 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 it was, yeah, it was like, a, it was like a, well, they talked about, Oh, we're giving you millions of dollars, but when you chopped it up into sixty-seven pools, it was like right. it was like we're getting forty-eight thousand or something. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere yeah. yeah. in there. That, that's well, that might buy two machines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or lease them for one year, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Uh, well, anyway, I'll, I guess I'll have a little bit. Can you also give me a list of like what we would need so that when I go down there, I can even just start throwing around? Well, some... what we need depends upon what system we go with. I mean, if we go with a total DRE, that's one thing. If we go with um, a ballot marking machine with optical scanners, that's another thing. If we go paper and have scanners in every precinct, that's a whole other thing. So, I just want really... to start getting some really loose ballpark okay. figures, is all I'm trying to get at. Well, it, I, I, right now I have no idea whether it would be like 50000 a year in a lease or if it would yes. be 200 I, And then it all depends on what the state certifies. It will. It will. Well, well, I assume if they're coming to this event, the state is likely to certify it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
I think, I think, my, I mean, I would just say my general recommendation is to get away from the DRE machines just because then you're going to have a couple of machines at least per precinct. I kind of like the ballot marking machines because basically it, it's, it's like a touch screen uh -huh. where they vote on the touch screen, but when they're done voting, then the strip comes out and then it goes over and goes in, into a, an yeah. optical scanner. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like what they're used to, but yet fulfilling our needs too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it more from like just a general cost <laughs> standpoint of trying to like minimize the number of machines that we need and... The, and see, that's where election reform would come in because of the vote centers that we could have and this it, and that that we can't have yet. Yeah. And that all goes back to election reform. Yeah. Yeah, because you basically can have, like what Lisa's talking about, which is a machine that you do the thing on, it pumps out a ballot, you put it into the optical scanner, or you do it where you have a paper ballot, they fill it out, and it goes into the optical scanner and gets scanned. Like, I, naturally, my first thought is, is I want to get rid of as many machines as possible. <laughs> but they all, I mean, there are challenges either way. Which is something to consider anyway. Okay. Uh, I guess... We'll move that up in the queue to a little bit more urgent and important than that was. Any update on the online GIS stuff? Did we put that? We're, I, I talked to, um, I've been on in ongoing conversations with both the solicitor and um, people in assessment and the IT department about coming up with other solutions for it. Um, we, uh, it's my opinion that we need to change vendors in order to get the GIS data online the way that we would like it. Um, I, my next kind of perspective on it is, is to discuss um, either getting quotes from Tyler Technologies or other organizations. The problem, again, in my opinion with Tyler is, is that they're a very expensive solution, um, they're state of the art that it would tie into pictometry and some of the other things that we're doing. Um, but I think it's time to have a conversation about having a different vendor for our assessment data. Just because we've, we've not, um, the situation with vision has not been positive. All right. <coughs> okay. Still working on it. Um, this Sunday is the start of the Human Services Summit with the Family Night. Um, it's from 5 to 7 on the second floor of the, uh, the talk building or the Allegheny Community <coughs> Center. Um, child care is provided. There'll be refreshments. We're encouraging families that are, um, you know, that have children or family members that are involved with human services to attend in order to provide feedback and um, you know, discuss information as a part of the overall Human Services Summit. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is going to be the summit with the providers um, between, and, and other interested people, um, between, um, it's like one and five, and um, I sent obviously an invitation, another like invitation to you guys this morning just to say that Commissioners are obviously welcome to attend, and um, so far we've got it completely booked up. The everybody, I don't want to say everybody. We we invited some forty plus agencies, um, including law enforcement, you know, health and human services, um, people in housing and in other areas. And of that pool, we've got we, we limited the seats to thirty, and we filled them completely. So it should be a good group. And, um, Things are progressing there nicely. I'm looking forward to seeing how it shakes out. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to ask <coughs> was um, I had Motorola come in, was that last week, about the radio communications program? And um, Jeff and I were able to stick around for most of the meetings, Mr. Morris and I weren't able to make it. Um, would it be all right with you all if I bring them back to talk at our May 7th work session about the radio system proposal? I don't have a problem with that. Great, great. And I'll invite, um, invite the sales guy to come back. Last update for me, um, I have 
you know, we've been talking since we got elected about <clears throat> some of the lack of documentation when it comes to process and procedure. So particularly related to HR, I prioritized making a few diagrams to simply show. I, I did this in fiscal last year, you may recall, I made a couple, just so that everyone was clear how to get requisitions through the process. Um, so I went ahead and did this with employee hiring as well. Um, I figured we should make one on discipline as well while I'm at it. Are there any others that jump out to you as things that we need to document exactly what happens and how I should? And by the way, I, I don't envision this necessarily being, I, I'm happy to format it and make these, kind of go over it, but um, I think that the department head that's closest to it should be kind of making the first draft of it. So this, so this I just, I did, but it only as kind of an example to show people <coughs> like what I would want drawn out. Anything else that jumps out is something that's really urgent that we should do? I mean, uh, there are definitely other things. I really like the idea of, of doing this. The, the purchasing document that you did was incredibly helpful. Um, in fact, we should probably follow up at this point and resend it out to the departments to look at just because we've had a few no issues order, with, yeah. with purchasing. Um, I think there are several other things that we could do, something along these lines. Well, so why don't you do this? If you go ahead and tell department heads that, if, that you want what you want, have them draw up, send it to me, I'll format it. Um, or if you think of something that you yourself want to do, you can scribble it on the back of the napkin and hand it over to me and I'll, I'll make this. Well, I, I work almost exclusively on napkins, so that'll work out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else? <laughs> Because I haven't heard about it, and I, I just scanned the, the proposal that they had, and I was looking at it thinking, okay, you know, where are we, like, where are we with that? Uh, it, it's not a big deal. I mean, we can go back. I can, yeah. Eric can check with Judy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I just wasn't sure if anybody heard anything. Uh, Going well. That's why they bought the TV, so cool. that so instead of uh, converging on one person's desk, they can use the TV, sure. and everyone down there can be looking and observing. So they're flying now. They should be. Awesome. Good to hear. Yes. All right. Well, anything else from the commissioners? Anything from departments or committees? Any public comment? Then I guess we can adjourn. Oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Did we talk about the meeting on Wednesday? Is there anything you need to add to the agenda? Um, I didn't the, only thing, the only thing that I would just say briefly is, is with the Human Services Summit and some of the other things, um, I'd really like to do uh, something, or I'm going to ask that some time be set aside at the um, at Wednesday's meeting in order to do something meaningful <laughs> for mental health awareness <laughs> month. Um, there's some, there's a couple of things that we're working on in conjunction with uh, mm -hmm. Forest Warren Mental Wellness, um, and the other thing that I would like to, or I just wanted to share with you. Um, for your input, you know, and anything that you would be interested in, in uh, working with or adding to the mix is, uh, you know, as a part of Mental Health um, Awareness Month, doing a, um, like, kind of a, a, a retrospective or a review of the work that we've done with BEI within the courthouse with the cleaning crew, mm -hmm. um, just because the um, the, the past six months, it'll be, I think it'll be six months in May, and they, um, 
they've really done a wonderful job and really would like to give them another opportunity to kind of review our work with them as a part of Mental Health Awareness Month. So I, I'll be contacting you about um, having like uh, doing a photo with them, having some, some of their staff come over and having a conversation with them and, and whatnot. Had, we've had a lot of really good compliments from the, the staff in the courthouse and different people, and I want to kind of document those too. You just want like five minutes there in the proclamation? Yeah, right? yep. Nothing okay. big. Just to <coughs> Nothing be aware of it. Anything else? Then that agenda will stay. Okay, thanks.